Hey gang, this is Rob, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to pass the A-plus exam. So in this actual video, we're gonna talk about the A-plus exam. So what the A-plus exam is, and then we're at the end of this, we can go through a couple questions and answers. As a family, I'll ask you the question, give you the answer, then actually explain to you why that answer is the answer, just to get you in the right frame of mind to actually pass the exam. Y'all ready? Let's get into it. The A plus exam is a two part exam. So the first part of the exam is gonna be a 90 question exam. And you're gonna have 90 minutes to knock out those 90 questions. So it's gonna be a myriad of question types. It's gonna be fill in the blank, it's going to be simulations. It's going to be choose all that apply, multiple choice. And there's going to be literally hundreds of topics that they're going to choose from to actually put on the actual exam when you take it. Now, you have to actually pass the first part and the second part of A plus to be fully A plus certified. The first part alone or the second part alone does not qualify as a certification. All right, so we know what the A plus is. So let's go ahead and go through a couple questions and answers just to get you a little bit more familiar as to what to expect. Secret, this is not the damn questions from the exam. This is not the questions from the exam. Corey lands on an official looking website telling him that a virus has been detected on his computer. The web page appears to be scanning the local computer and often reports multiple found infections. What type of malware is being described? Is it anti-IPS? Is it anti-IDS? Is it rogue antivirus? Or is it software corruption? All right, gang, so the answer to this question is rogue antivirus. So rogue antivirus simply means that it's gonna be giving you false positives, right? So it's gonna tell you, hey man, you got a root kit. Hey, somebody stole your identity. Hey, there's a virus in this file. So you can click on that notification. So you can click on that button to actually either download a virus, to download some spyware, or to have something downloaded onto your computer that's gonna actually spy on your computer, download a virus, or compromise you or that device in some sort of way. Roland believes he has malware on his computer. What is the first thing that Roland should do? Turn off his device, unplug from power, disconnect from network, or none of these. So the first thing that Roland should do is disconnect from the network. Why do we think that is? The reason that Roland should disconnect from the network is because if he keeps it connected to the network, it'll start actually going through the network, right? So it'll affect you, then it'll affect the person next to you, then it'll affect the entire department, then it'll affect HR, then it'll affect pretty much everybody on your network. So we wanna make sure that the actual virus can't propagate and it can't migrate to anywhere else on the actual network, right? We wanna make sure when there's ever malware that it's contained, we quarantine it, and then we eradicate it. Lenny wants to connect his Bluetooth speakers to his PC. He believes he's followed all instructions, but the speakers don't seem to be working. When he checks the PC's device manager, the speakers do not appear. What should Lenny try first? Should he ensure Bluetooth is turned on for both devices, power cycle PC, power cycle speakers, uninstall and reinstall speakers? So just remember, gang, on the actual exam, you want to pay attention to what the question is asking. What should you try first? What should you try next? What's the best thing to do? What's the cheapest thing to do? So on and so forth. So the first thing you should try and do is the simplest thing, right? Make sure the Bluetooth is turned on on both devices. And then if that's turned on, then you can go a little bit deeper from there, right? So you don't want to um, disable drivers or erase drivers or 
remove the whole damn hard drive or do something drastic when it may be something as simple as just turning on a button. So he will want to make sure that the Bluetooth is turned on on both devices and then moves on from there. Jamie is trying to download applications from the Play Store. Every time she tries to download an application, it fails. What can possibly remedy the issue? Closing all applications and updating device firmware. Factory reset the device. Update the UIE hub. Uninstall and reinstall the entire Play Store. So what you would do most likely to make sure there's nothing weird is just close the Play Store, close all other applications and update the actual firmware. So the firmware is the software that came with the device. And a lot of times if the firmware is out of date, applications and compatibility issues will arise. So the easiest thing to do would be to close everything and then update everything just to make sure that everything is working. If that wasn't the right fix, you just keep on going up the ladder, right? Just remember in real life and on the exam, just to make sure you start with the simple stuff first. Now, you start with the simple stuff, but that doesn't mean that that's the answer. Just start there and then go up from there. If that doesn't work, go to something else. Lonnie is currently in his school's computer lab. He notices that his cell phone keeps connecting and disconnecting to Bluetooth devices within the lab. These connections are unintended and he doesn't want connections like these to happen in or outside the lab. What's a step he should take to ensure it no longer happens? Should he turn off discovery mode? Turn on discover when within range? Turn on discover when out of range? Both A and C. So real simple, discovery mode. Discovery mode simply means that, depending on what the settings are, which his settings are pretty much discover and connect. Discovery mode means that whenever other Bluetooth devices are around him, they can discover that device and connect to it, right? If discovery mode is turned off, nobody can discover your device. And then like I said, you go within the settings of discovery mode to have more security, less security, auto connect, so on and so forth. So the easiest thing for him is just to make sure that when he goes into the computer lab, he has discovery mode off or just to turn off his Bluetooth altogether. Which of the following most closely relates to incident reporting? Scope, chain of custody, back out plan, or hub input. So the thing that most closely relates to incident reporting would be chain of custody. So whenever an incident happens, whenever something crazy happens, there's a chain of custody. So let's say I do something weird on the internet and I'm at work, they would take my device from me, right? To make sure I didn't delete anything, to make sure I didn't give it to anybody else, to make sure I didn't damage it or anything like that. And then the chain of custody will start with me as the first responder. And then depending on how serious it was, whatever they found on my computer, I don't wanna use myself as, a, as an example, whatever they found on their computer um, would be safe, right? They wouldn't be able to delete it, they wouldn't be able to move it, anything like that. So we'll go from the first responder, maybe to somebody in legal, then it may even go to the police. So the chain of custody will pretty much document that, okay, I had it, no changes happened. This person had it, no changes happened. Now, let's say that the weird stuff that was on that person's computer was there when they gave it to me, but then when I gave it to somebody else, it disappeared. It means that the person that I gave it to either did something weird or somebody else did something weird. So the chain of custody pretty much protects everybody in that chain to know exactly when things happen and when stuff was intact and when maybe it got out of whack. Hey, if you're looking to get into IT, I would advise you to get into the Zero to IT Hero program. So most of the students in the Zero to IT Hero program are getting A+, Net+, and Security+, plus in 90 days. Now it's not a race, but most of the guys and girls that's in the program are getting all those certifications in 90 days. You can look up any of those certifications you can see the salary, you can see the potential, you can see the opportunities that these certifications will actually afford to you. So if you like this video, if you like me, if you like this channel, if you like how I present information, come on over to the Zero to IT Hero program where you'll get training, you'll get vouchers for the actual exams, and you actually get accountability coaching and mentorship directly from 
yours truly. So I hope to see you in class. Blank is a set of skills that enables us to learn about and understand people who are different from ourselves, thereby becoming better able to serve them within their own communities. Would it be cultural sensitivity, demographics, human empathy training, or none of the above? So when you're working in IT, a lot of times you're going to be working in a team. And a lot of times these teams are super diverse. There may be people from different countries, different backgrounds, different genders, so on and so forth. So you have to have cultural sensitivity. You know, you don't want to say weird jokes that may offend people. You want to, you don't want to do anything that may offend people who are not uh, from where you're from, may not have your sense of humor. Because at the end of the day, remember, it's cool if the people you work with are your friends, your buddies, but everything that's funny to you may not be funny to everybody else. So just make sure that you're sensitive to everybody's needs. Janice is the system administrator for her company. She onboards five new employees daily. She always makes new users sign documentation outlining what is acceptable behavior behavior while using company devices. What type of document are new users signing? Is it an AEU? Is it an AUP? Is it an APU? Is it an ATE? Now, gang, as we've been going through these questions, some of the questions have acronyms. There are going to be a bunch of acronyms on the actual exam. So if you do not pay attention, acronyms will literally choke the shit out of you inside of the testing room, inside the testing center, okay? So you got to make sure that whenever you see acronym, you know what it stands for, you know what it does and what happens if it breaks or if it's missing or if it's not there, right? So acronyms, right? Acronyms will make your life a lot easier when it comes to passing these CompTIA exams, okay? So the user would actually sign something called an AUP or an acceptable user agreement, an acceptable user agreement. So that literally means what's acceptable on the network and what's not acceptable on the network. All right. So that's kind of a fail safe for you as a fail safe for the company. So somebody can't just say, oh, I didn't know. Well, you signed it. So we're about to fire you and you're about to go to jail. Right. All right, gang, so let's end this with a quick little story. So this is the first week of January. Literally every student is taking an exam through Master IT has passed. Does that always happen? Nope, but uh, 2022 has started out pretty good for us, right? I wanna give you guys a couple little tips about taking the actual exam remotely. If you look in the comments below or look at the end and maybe popping up after I finish talking that Taking a test at home can be super convenient, but there's just a couple of things that you gotta be cognizant of, right? One, make sure that you're in a quiet environment. If there's construction going on, if um, your baby mama hates you and she's gonna be cussing you out in the kitchen, that's probably not conducive to you passing the exam, right? The next thing is, when you're actually taking the exam, the proctor the setup may be a little nerve-wracking but don't be upset don't get upset there's a few things that you need to do for one you got to have a clean environment they're going to ask you to do one or two things either one you're going to take your camera and do a full 360 so they can make sure there's no body in the corner whispering uh, answers to you or somebody writing on the damn chalkboard and uh, throwing stuff on the ground so you can look at it right or they're going to actually have you take pictures of behind you uh, in front of you, left, right, so on and so forth. You're also gonna have to have a driver's license, a driver's license that they can see or a password that they can see that you are who you say you are. Another thing which you should already know, you can't have anything else open, no Google, can't play no music. And another thing happened. Um, that I just thought about that I haven't had a student do it yet and I wouldn't recommend you do it either. If you lose internet connection, right? You're gonna have to take the test over again. It doesn't count as a failure, but they're not gonna start you off from where you were. Usually if you lose internet connection, and I wanna say the grace period is maybe 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes or something. If you lose connection for that amount of time, they won't allow you to jump back and start from where you started from, right? You're gonna have to com completely start over again, which can kind of uh, ding your confidence, can piss you off, so on and so forth. So 
Um, I actually had a trucker that was asking me, did, is it a good idea for him to pull over to the side of the road and use his hotspot to take the exam? I told him no. I know hot spots are super duper great, but sometimes they're super unreliable. And the, most of the times when they're uh, unreliable is when you need them. If you're watching them cat videos, oh, it's gonna be uh, 4K, everything gonna be crystal clear, and gonna be no lag or nothing. But once you take the damn exam, it's gonna be uh, a couple kilobytes coming through there and that's about it, right? So just make sure you got a stable connection, make sure you go in there with confidence. Other than that, uh, make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in class.